Jeff Fidel. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Two Five Tuesday, coming right up. Two Five Tuesday. So I first heard Jeff play in the Jam of the Week group on Facebook and he was absolutely crushing it. Sounds like a mix of Joe Henderson, John Coltrane, Sonny Rollins, and Dexter Gordon like all in one jumble. It's insane. Really, really great stuff. You gotta check him out there. And then later I found out that Jeff plays in one of the premier military bands, the West Point Band. Thank you for your service, Jeff. He's got a ton of things he does on the side, and I would highly suggest you checking it all out. He has a big band called the Analog Jazz Orchestra. I'll put a link below. He also teaches lessons if you're looking for a great teacher. I'll put his email below. He just started posting a ton of stuff on Instagram, so I'll add all of Jeff's info below, and you guys can check him out and show him some love. So Jeff did something pretty cool. He gave us two lines for 2-5 Tuesday, so that's pretty awesome in itself. He's showing us how to make the most of the language you already have and creating a different approach. So in these lines that you're going to hear, the five chord and the and the result res and the and the result re today junior the resolution to the one chord is going to stay the same, but the approach with the two chord is going to change. So here's the first line. <laughs> Now here it is a little slower. All right, let's break it down. Okay, so here we go. Here's the first line. As you can see, we're starting on the and of four. The way that I'm thinking of this and the way that I'm hearing this is these first five notes up until you get to right here, B3 to the E flat, which is the third of the, of the minor chord. That's really an all approach right there. It's kind of an approach, or you can see the enclosure here, right? That's the enclosure, the E, the D, and that's surrounding that E flat. And this is a really classic approach to a note, whether it be the third, whether it be the fifth, the seventh, whatever note you wanna kind of approach, you can use this. So this whole this whole first five bar thing, that whole thing is, is very common language. So that's that's something that you should try to hear and try to sing. And then the next part, the next, the, you know, the third and the fourth beat of this bar is also very common. It's just a, a one, two, three, five pattern, right? And, but we're starting from the third. So it's three, four, five, and then the flat seven. But this, but this sound, this one, two, three, five sound is a sound that should be very familiar. So Sounds like he'd be hanging with Train. You know, Coltrane practiced 25 hours a day. <laughs> So both of these little chunks, I'm going to put this in a different color. This chunk and this chunk are very common language. So ba do be ya bu do ba do ba, right? I'm not a, I'm not a singer. I'm not claiming to be a good singer, but that sound is very common language, and that's something that you know you should get into your ears and you should hear. So that's the two chord there. When he hits the five chord, here's where a lot more tension and color comes into play. Now this is the 13 or the six. To save space, I'm gonna just write six, but that goes up to the one, right? So that's the one of the five chord. And then remember we're talking about dominant chord, so the flat seven back to the six. And here's where all the tension comes in. Now, now we have the flat six or the flat 13, right? That's also flat 13. Going down to the three, and then we have the, the sharp nine flat nine sound. So this A flat is a sharp nine, and then the G flat here is the flat nine. And that resolves really, really nicely into the five of the one chord. Now moving on to the one chord, we have all major language. This is all diatonic. There's nothing out of the key here. And this is all just based off pivots and enclosures, right? Because most of this is scale. He's just going five, four, three, two, and then here's a diatonic enclosure around the one. So that's the seven back to the one. And this is just arpeggio right here. One, three, five, seven, one, six, seven, five. I'll put this in blue and sing along. Be ba da ba bo ba 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 do di do di da. 
You guys can make fun of me in the comments below. All right, so that's line number one. Okay, here's the second one. Now here it is a little slower. Now, as you may have heard, the only thing different in this line is the two chord. Plus, there's a pretty fat ending. So let's do a quick breakdown of the two chord. Okay, so here's line number two. As you can see, this is a different approach than the, than the first line. Now this is pretty much an arpeggiated line. We're basically doing kind of a leading tone, this six right here, going into the seven. Remember, that's a flat seven because we're talking about the minor key. And in minor, the threes and the sevens are always flat on a minor chord. This is just arpeggio, you know, six to seven. So that's the leading tone. And then we're just going five, three, one, three, five, back to seven. Let me put this one in blue and I'll sing it for you. Do da ba ba bo ba 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 ba. And then we're back to the five and it ends exactly the same way as the first line. Pretty cool to see two different approaches into the same kind of language. And one is a little bit more scale, scalular, scalar. You guys know I always struggle with that. And then one's more of an arpeggio. Kind of cool to see the different ways. And then you can mix and match these ideas as you see fit. I'll see you in a second. So the way that I broke them down was a long two five. It was one bar of two, one bar of five, and then a bar of one or two bars of one. Now, if you double time these lines, if you double the speed, you play in 16th notes, you can fit all of this in a quick two five. So the two minor bar would be actually only half a bar, the five bar would be half a bar, and then the one would be one bar. You gotta work on your chops, you gotta play this stuff, you gotta hear it more importantly, and we're gonna talk about that right in here in a second. So speaking of hearing the lines, I break down these lines in this way to show you different colors and to make you aware of kind of the theory that's going on there and how these lines are constructed. More importantly, I really want you to hear these lines. So getting these lines into your ears, how do we do that? I'll tell you how. You should sing. I know not everyone likes to sing, but singing is, is one of the best ways to get these things in your, in your head and into your ears. And it's gonna end up being easier to play. Once you hear things that you were unable to play before, it becomes way easier to play them. So start singing, start trying it. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll do a video on how I sing lines and how I get them over to my horn and develop my ears. If, if you want that to be a video, put a comment below, I'll make a video on that. As you sing more and more, just like with anything, you're gonna get better and better. The pitch recognition is gonna get better. Your interval recognition is gonna get much better, whether ascending or descending in your intervals. You're just gonna you're just gonna improve all around. It just takes practice. We're talking about practice, man. Start practicing it. Practice. But honestly, I guarantee that if you start adding singing into your playing, even if it's just five or ten minutes at every practice session, you're gonna improve. So that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much, man, for sending these in. These are great lines. Everybody have an awesome day, an awesome week. Until next time, always positive, always progressing. Later. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. uh -huh.